Hello and welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And now for something completely different on the channel today, we're going to be looking at a brand new type of puzzle that's been invented by Greg Rogers Powers, who constructs under the pseudonym Egger, E-double-G-R, uh, on Logic Masters Germany. And he calls these, these puzzles, and there are several of them, but we're going to try one, um, Treasure Hunt Pythons. <laughs> so um, I have read the rules before I've looked at this puzzle, and they are interesting. And uh, yeah, I'll read them to you in a moment. But a couple of things I wanted to mention first. Um, if you're a follower of the channel, you'll know that we're working hard already on an Arrow Sudoku app. And in fact, I've received Fistimafel's Arrow Sudoku's already ready for this app, which is absolutely brilliant. Um, and he wrote me an email where he, he mentioned something quite interesting. And for those of you who are constructors out there, you might be interested in this. Um, he says, I immediately had some interesting ideas for a non-consecutive Arrow Sudoku, but this combination seems to be haunted. I managed to construct an arrangement of only three arrows that did not have any obvious problems, but several hours later I found out that despite the low number of only three arrows, the puzzle had no solution. Since this problem subsequently occurred for each and every idea I had, I decided to discard this variant again. So if anyone ever manages to create a good non-consecutive arrow Sudoku on a classical 9x9 grid, they really have my deepest respect. So there is a challenge for you. Um, and I know many of you will be immediately reaching for your uh, pens and papers. And yeah, I look forward to seeing what Fistabavell's quote yields. Um, yeah, now I've got some more interesting news. Obviously, over on Patreon at the moment, we have our Groundhog Day Sudoku, which was our monthly reward for February definitely worth checking out hundreds of correct solutions so far and lots and well hundreds of people saying how much they've enjoyed it well um, we have um, we've just received some puzzles from Scott Strosal the brilliant constructor and we're going to release them on Patreon as well on Valentine's Day as a thank you to all of you to show our love for you guys for watching the channel um, and we thought we would we would do an interesting prize. So whoever manages to finish Scott Strosal's puzzles first and send us the correct answer, um, we will give you the, the option uh, as to whether or not you want to test a new Sudoku hunt that we hope to release for patrons at the start of March. So start of next month, we're working hard on a new Sudoku hunt. Um, and yeah, obviously it's going to need testing. And we thought this might be... Uh, for somebody who's quick enough to get Scott's puzzles done quickly, it might be exactly the sort of person we're looking for. Our testers on the general channel are already completely overworked. Um, so, yeah, this is going to be an, there's an interesting prize available. Some of you may not want to win the prize, and that's absolutely fine. You don't have to. We'll find somebody anyway. But if you want to win the prize and if you want to be the first to see uh, what we've come up with, then this is the way to do it. Now, Let's get to the rules of Greg Rogers Powers puzzle and let me read them to you. What, we've, what we're tasked with today is to draw a snake into the grid. A snake is a one cell wide path of orthogonally connected cells starting at the head and leading to the tail. Nothing terribly surprising so far. The snake never touches itself orthogonally but may touch diagonally and the snake never doubles back to cover a two by two region. So let's just think about what this means. So that means the snake, you know, it can do things like this and double back on itself. And it could go to that square because that square touches this one diagonally. What it, what it can't do, though, is, say, go to this square next. Because now the snake would definitely share a long edge. And it can't double back on itself, which means if it's doing this sort of thing, it can't turn around and go back there. Because you can see there's a 2 by 2 region full of snake. Now, all cells with the same shape in them are clues where the value of each clue denotes its distance from a hidden cell. Distance is measured as a number of orthogonal steps. The square map points to the head of the snake. The circle map points to the tail of the snake. Now, luckily, we've got an example we can look at in a minute because this is already confusing. Each clue also indicates how many of the eight surrounding cells are part of the snake, and clues cannot be on the snake. Right, so here is the example. 
So you can see in the example it's a lot smaller but a snake has been drawn. The snake is one cell wide and it has no two by two bits. Um, now if we look if we look at the triangle clues I think what what's happening here is that the triangles are telling us two things. Firstly each triangle clue is telling us how far the triangle, let's call the triangle the head, um, is telling us how far the head of the snake is from the triangle. So this triangle, you would have to go four cells, one, two, three, four, in order to reach the triangle, you know, the head of the snake. From this triangle, you'd have to only go two cells. From this triangle, you'd only have to go two cells. But also, the numbers in the triangle are not only telling us the distance to the head, they're telling us how many of the surrounding cells are snakes. So this two is saying there are just two cells of the surrounding five that can be snake. The four, obviously if the four has eight cells around it, and yeah, and four of those are snake. Let's look at the circle now. So the circle we're saying is the tail of the snake. So the one, oh yeah, okay, and the so clues cannot be part of the snake. Right, so every every sort of cell with a shape in it is not on the snake. The circle here is saying it's two cells away, which it is from the tail, and there are two cells of its surrounding cells, only two are on the snake. So I sort of understand it. I have no idea how you go about solving it, but that's why we enjoy solving puzzles on cracking the cryptic is because we don't know how to do them and we have to force our brains to think so that's the pleasure i'm going to get do have a go yourselves the way to play is to click the link under the video as usual now i get to play let's get cracking and immediately we're faced with the problem of what on earth is you're meant to do to get cracking Right, uh, I've got no idea how you solve these, obviously. So, oh, what I should say, by the way, is there's a whole series of these. So if you enjoy this one, um, just go to Logic Masters Germany and look for Egger's Puzzles, E-double-G-R, and you'll find there's loads, but this is the one he emailed us about to suggest we tried. So that's how we've picked it. Um, now, Right, I have, I, as I say, I've got no clue how you're meant to do this, but what I can see is that circled clues, those three circled clues are quite a long way apart. And yet they all have to be in reach of the tail of the snake. So uh, let me just highlight them, just to, I, I, as I say, this might be complete red herring but, or a purple herring, but the this cell, for example, can't possibly be the tail of the snake because that cell is way too far away from this square. One, two, three, four. I mean, yeah, actually, actually, that's this is this may be sensible because if you look at each one of these, so I've picked these to be sort of three cells that are as far apart as possible. But you could never make a complete ring of cells around uh, around a circle or a square because then that would be a very short snake. <laughs> um, and the snake wouldn't have a head or a tail. It would be just a ring. So the maximum you can ever put into one of these clue cells is seven. So any cell that is further away than seven from any of these three squares is not the tail of the snake. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the entirety of the top row cannot be the tail of the snake because it would, it couldn't be reached by this square. So we can just get rid of those. Um, I'll make them green. So what? Now, actually, we can go further than this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the furthest away in row two that could be the head or the tail of the snake, although I think it might not work for this one, but clearly this cell is possibly reached by the clue in this square, in this square here. But this one couldn't be because this would be eight cells away. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So all of those squares come out. And this is going to just 
progress diagonally, isn't it? One, three, four, five, six. So those two can be, yeah, those can't. And we should just keep going down in a diagonal direction um, like this. And this might allow us to sort of triangulate where we can, or something we can say about, and then it's got to come out again, presumably. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. So you can never get to that square. Okay. So I think just considering this square, this, the greens are eliminated. Now we can do exactly the same with this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the whole of that column is out. Most of this column is out. Um, and we carry on going diagonally, presumably. So we go to those squares. They, they are out. This one's okay, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. yeah. Uh, five, six, seven. So those come out. This comes out. And now this one is the only one we've not considered. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven so everything over there is out two three four five six seven so it could be this square but that one's ruled out of that one i think so all of those come out one two three four five six seven all of these come out and that one must also come out oh so that is a most peculiar pattern. i was not expecting to get this so one two three four five yeah okay this one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, okay, that, that is reachable by all of them. Um, now, what does this tell us about the puzzle? The answer is diddly squat, I think. I'm sorry, I, I, didn't, I didn't really think this would work, but indeed it doesn't seem to, does it? So, what we've managed to conclude is that the tail of the snake is somewhere in these cells. I'm not even sure that's worth recording. I think I'll just remember it. Right, sorry, we're going to have to just start again. Let's just start again and think harder. So, um, see, all of the squares are much more tightly compact or, or tightly grouped. Now, that square, that square interests me because it hasn't it's on the perimeter so that means that the head of the snake is no no more than 5 cells away from this because the maximum digit you could put in this square is 5 so oh, in fact you and you can't put 5 into it actually oh no oh no you can no you can't put 5 into it because if you put 5 into it it would have to look like this the snake would have to look like this, which would mean this square would have to be the head or tail, or it have to be the head of the snake. Oh no, it could be the tail of the snake. Ah! No, because that square can't be the tail of the snake. We've just proved that. The tail of the snake is over here. So this would have to be the head of the snake, and that's an immediate paradox, because if we put five into this square, it's saying that the head of the snake is five away from this square, not one away from it. So that's wrong. That's nonsense. So this square can be one, two, three, or four. So the maximum distance that the head of the snake away, is away from here is four, which is one, two, three, four. It can never be. It can never be on another circled square. So. So it's actually in one of those positions. Those are the only positions that are four away from this that are not on other uh, shaped cells. Right, and we can... Well, we can rule out several of these immediately, actually. In fact, we can we can we can do this in two ways. We can do this in two ways because if we consider these as possible heads of the snake, the problem is how do we put four cells around this? To be honest, because if we put four cells around it like this, 
then this is the head of the snake. We know it can't be the tail, so it would have to be the head and it's only one away. If we put four cells around it like this, that doesn't work because if this is the head of the snake, it's one away. If it's not the head of the snake, the snake has to do that and that's a two by two. And if it's, what's, what else have we got as possible ways of, we can't do things like that because then this is creating a head and tail over here and we know the tail is over here. Similarly, this doesn't work. Similarly, well, what about that? Does that work? The answer is no, that's a head or a tail and it can be neither. Four doesn't work. So actually, we, that was a simpler way of doing that. The way I was going to do it by looking at those was I think that this, this cell is going to have a problem. But maybe we can do that with three instead. Let's think about whether this can be three. One, two, three. So that now the options are these cells exactly for the head or the tail of the snake. But th ah, yeah, 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 hang on. So how on earth do we put three cells around this? So if any of these are the head or the tail, or the head of the snake to be precise, if any of these are the head, this square would have to be a one, which would mean that this, this purple cell, either this, this, or this, is the only uh, colored cell or snake cell that this cell sees. But this is a three. So this is going to have to contribute something to one of these three squares and therefore break this. So none of those are possible. I am very comfortable with that. This one, now, so if it was this one, this would not be a one, it would be a three. And if it was a three, um, what does that mean? How can these both be three? without creating another head or tail down here. So we're saying this is the head. You, you can't do it, there's just no way. If you do that, this one's correct, but as soon as the snake continues, this one breaks because it would have more than three around it. If you do things like this, you're creating lots of heads and tails, and this is not a hydra we're making, it's just a single a head with a, a snake with a single head and one tail um that's nonsense that's creating a tail there it just does it's just broken isn't it this doesn't work uh forgive me for taking a long time to figure that out but i think i am actually getting somewhere with this i'm now down to just one and two so i'm going to try two now so if this is two one two we're looking at those three. Well, we can't do this one because that can't be the head or tail of the snake. It's got a square in it. Let's get rid of that. Sorry. So we're looking at these three cells. Um, so again, these two are just going to be ruled out immediately because we'd have to put two into that square. And if this, if this is the head of the snake, how do you keep this to two and this to two? You can't. If you go there, that's three. If you go there, it's three. So this, this is just nonsense. Get rid of that one. This one, hmm, that one might be tricky. Oh, well, you can't take those two squares because then it will double back and create a two by two. You can't go this way because then it has to continue and create it. You know, that's this is now a three. Yeah, so the only way this works is if this is the head and then this is the head doing this and then the tail pokes in here to make this a two. But this clue is absolutely broken if that's the case and you can't put the tail of the snake there because we know the tail is somewhere over here. This one doesn't work. Now, can I get rid of this one as well? And if I can, we are cooking with gas. So this one is one, two, three. This is four away from that one. So I've got to make this four, I've got to keep this down to two. This, ah, I've not really thought about this one, but that would have to be a one, because it's only one away. Which means the snake would have to go here and then up, um, because the snake can't come to this square or this would be a two. This is a fascinating puzzle, actually. Now, 
Ah, okay. This is going to break, isn't it? This is going to break because now I've completed the two, so all of those can't be snake. I've not completed the four. How do I complete the four without creating another head or tail of the snake? That is not possible. There is no way of doing it. I can't put the tail of the snake in any of these cells. So I can't do something like that. Uh, sorry, I can't, I can't do something like that because that will be the tail. I can't, oh, in fact, I can't double back on myself either. So this has to extend one more. So I've got to put two more out of these four in without creating a head or a tail. Ah, uh, no, not possible. I mean, I could turn right there and then put two cells in there with this continuing up. But you can see, although that does meet the count requirements, it's created a tail. So this is, this is wrong. Uh, that's what I've concluded. And that's a good thing because it's taken me a long time and I've probably done it in the most or the least efficient way but I am now very confident that this square is a one and if it's a one oh yeah this is yeah this is perfect if it's a one where does the head go well if the head's in either of those two positions it cannot move without forcing this to be a two because it's going to take a second cell. If this moves up, it sh this should be a two. If this moves in either direction, this should be a two. So the only, I think that is the head of the, um, I'll make it red. This is the head of the snake. And this one means all those squares are not in. And we might find this puzzle becomes easier now because suddenly, oh, I've had another thought. I can fill in all of the squares. I can fill in all of the squares. Yeah, that follows, doesn't it? If I know exactly where the head is, that must be a two. That must be a three. One, two, three, four, five. That's a five. That will be a six. One, two, three, four, five. That's a six, which I could have got just by thinking about the fact it's on the diagonal. So I now think now we've got to make this snake come out. So it's going to have to take those three squares. This two is now finished. So those two squares are not in. This circle clue now is seeing three snake sections and it could see a maximum of two more. So this square is three, four or five. This can't be the head or the tail. This can't be the tail of the snake. We know the tail is somewhere over there. So that's green. Um, now what? So, right, okay, here's, here's some logic. There are four white cells here and three of them have to be snake. Could it be those three? The answer is no, because if it is these three and not this one, the snake would finish here and this would be the tail of the snake which it can't be so if that's not if it's not these three this must be a snake section now if this is a snake section we know it's not the tail the tails over here so it must be actually a snake that we can just continue and that actually that gives us the three because it must come through this little channel this square is therefore not snake Oh, that's an interesting cell, but hang on, let's just continue the snake up here. Um, this square now sees, this square uh, already sees five, five cells and it could see a maximum of seven. So this is five, six or seven. So now the cell that I'm interested in, I think, is this one. 
Why is this interesting? Well, it's interesting because if this is in and it's part of the snake, those two cells are orthogonally connected to the snake and could not be snake. Don't let your snake touch itself. Now, if that's the case, so in fact, let's look at this. You can see it would look like this. Now, all those squares have to be snake because I've got to meet the count of six. Oh, this is, no, this is broken. This is broken. This is broken because uh, the five is broken, actually, even, even without us continuing. Because how do I get this five to have five snake cells around it? This can't be snake. So we've got one, two, three cells at the bottom there, four cells that can't be snake surrounding it. So the maximum count it could have going around it is four. Four is not equal to five. There's a knowledge bomb from cracking the cryptic. So, so this is great because that means that this square is not snake, which means the snake must come up here and it must turn that way, which means that's not three anymore. This now is not five because it's got six around it. Actually, that's interesting. Because now there can't be that many cells in this puzzle that meet the criteria that they are six or seven away from this and four or five away from this. So we, I think now we can triangulate much more closely to where the tail of the snake is. Um, let's just do that. One, two, three, four, five, six. So if this is six, this could be the tail of the snake and then diagonals from there. So these cell, oh no, sorry, I just messed that up by double clicking. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it's going to be these squares, but obviously several of these are far too far away to meet this criteria. Uh, one, two, three, four, two. Yeah, so if this is six, two, three, this, it's always an even number away from this one. Look, that's interesting because of the diagonal as it is on. So this would have to be four and it would have to be this cell. So this cell is one possibility for the tail of the snake now. Now, if this is seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we're looking now at this diagonal. Um, and this presumably, yeah, now we're an odd number of cells away. So this is going to have to be five and it's going to be this one. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. It can't reach the one up here. So now, yeah, so it's these two cells are the interesting cells. One of these two cells is the tail of the snake. Um, which one? Can we rule one of these out? We can... Oh yes, we can. Oh, this is this is very this is beautiful setting because this is, I think, what we were meant to do. Why do I think that? Well, let's think about this square. Could this square be the tail of the snake? Uh, let's get rid of that one. The answer is no, because how is this snake going to get past this to collect its other other bit over here? without touching this cell orthogonally. It can't get out. It has to either take that cell or that cell, either of which ends the snake, and we'd end up with two snakes in the grid. We're only meant to have one snake. This is not the tail. The tail must go here. Uh, yeah, I'll make it purple, why not? Now I can fill in all the circles. So this is five, this is seven, this is two, that's three, one, two, that's four. That's four, therefore. That's probably five. Yeah. Is that seven? Yeah. Okay. So we get here. And this is a seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it must take the, oh, good. It must take those two cells. That can't be snake, therefore, so it's got to continue. Five here, one, two, three, four, five. We've done the five going around there, so that square's green. It must come out to here. 
one, two, three, four. I need I need six round here, so it's got to take those two. And all of a sudden, there's a great swathe of this grid that's cut off. You can't you can't ever come up here again because to, to come up here, you you touch yourself as you went round the corner, and we mustn't do that. So all of those squares turn green. Um, okay. Seven is a huge number. It's basically almost going to have to ring around this entire circle. Six, one, two, three. Oh, it's still got options to how it does that. Five. Oh, hang on. This is a five, so it's got to take... Oh, this is, this is massive. It's got to take this square. If it takes this square, it, this square is no longer accessible to the snake. So now the six... Now the six is forced. One, two, three, four, five, six. All of these are in. And now everything orthogonally connected to the snake can turn green because we mustn't let our snake touch itself. Um, unless it's just at a point. And two, I'm not sure what this does at the top here. It probably does that. Um, Hmm. The two here is a bit interesting, though, because this can't be a head or a tail. So, in fact, none of these cells at all could ever be. In fact, uh, this two is forced because none of these can be head or tail. You can never have any snake here or it would be a head or a tail. So all of those squares are green. And now how do we complete the two here? It can only be those two squares, which means the snake turns down and therefore goes up here, which means that's green. We know that's green, therefore, the two and the three are correct. And we're just, what are we just left with? The five here. We've got two so far. We've got to pick. Th we've got to pick three of these four squares. Right. Okay. I know what we do. So is it those three that are in the five? No, because if it was just these three that were in the five, this square would not be snake, and this is another head or tail, which is not right. So we know that if it's not those three, it must be that one. Once it's this one. Now we have to think about how we move around the seven because we've come in here. We have two choices. It either goes round that way, and therefore it's stranded, or it's got to go round this way, and that's going to work. So it's got to do that. These squares turn green. We've got to come through this little gap here. And this is, I think we've basically done now. It's got to take this square. And the final disambiguating piece is this four clue, because we've got to make sure we reach a count of four, which means one, which means this can't come down. It takes that square, completes the snake. I'm filling in the rest of the grid in green. And that was a lot of fun. Beautiful idea for a puzzle. I really enjoyed that, Greg. Um, and as I say, anyone who watched the video and thinks uh, they all tried the puzzle and enjoyed it, there are loads more of these, apparently. I'm going to go and find them now. Uh, thanks for watching and back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.